would you do to change something for the better? Climb mountains, dance till you drop, or walk 5,000 miles? Well, how about a two-day, 165-mile bike ride from Miami to Key West with a few hundred like-minded people to raise awareness and funds for people living with HIV? I'm Alex Redmond. Can Community Health is Smart Ride's 2018 title sponsor this year. And here's David Roy, Bob Trisolini, and Al Concha to tell you all about it. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm so happy that you're here to raise awareness of this fabulous ride that has so many hundreds of people getting together for one cause, to raise HIV awareness. So tell us about the ride and why you are involved. Let's start with you, Al. Um, I actually, I, I do it for a bunch of personal reasons. I myself work in health field, um, so I'm actually around HIV, um, unfortunately a little, a little bit too much, so I ride for people who can't ride. I ride to bring a voice to those people who um, unfortunately don't have that voice to, to, to be heard. And, and to bring it to the forefront. Yeah, because many people think that nowadays HIV is no longer a problem, but unfortunately yeah. uh, there are rising numbers of people living with HIV and Florida is near the top of the list for new HIV cases and also for HIV overall. So we really do need to try to educate people so that they can stay sexually healthy and also for those uh, get people into treatment so they have hope. David, you have um, also very personal reasons for doing this. Why yes. do you ride and who do you ride for? I ride for Valerie and Debbie. Ah, so we have a picture of Valerie Wojohowicz. Valerie is actually somebody that works for CAN as a peer yes. navigator. And there she is right there in her smart ride uniform. Why, why do you ride for Valerie, though? Because people that don't know her don't know about Valerie and Debbie. Well, she's been, well, they've both been mm -hmm. HIV positive for the last 30 years mm -hmm. plus. So I do it for them. And like Al said, uh, I do it for the ones who can't. I think it's really important for people to realize, too, that as a woman living with HIV, that Valerie actually will go out there and speak to people and she educates people and particularly people that are newly diagnosed because imagine your grandchild or your son or your daughter or your mother being diagnosed and not knowing where to turn they must feel like they've hit a brick wall people like Valerie and Debbie will actually meet them as peer navigators women that are living with HIV offering hope so that's a wonderful reason to do it and, and I, think, a, I think that's what they do they give hope yes they do they offer hope and and Bob, you're actually involved this year. Bob is CAN Community Health's board chair. That's and right. you're participating in Smart Ride. Are you, how far are you riding? Well, I'm not riding, but I'm going to work wherever I'm needed. Mm -hmm. So giving out water or ice towels or sweeping up, whatever, I'm happy to be part of it. I feel as board chair, too, it's my obligation and responsibility to get the word out about testing and prevention for HIV, hepatitis C, and all STDs. So I'm thrilled to be doing it. Absolutely, it's wonderful. Are they gonna be having testing at the event, do you know? I think they are, yes. Ah, uh, that's wonderful, so that's great. And are, is, are there other opportunities for people that don't want to actually ride in the Smart Ride? There are. Uh, actually, you could, as Bob was saying, you could volunteer, you could crew. Um, this is one of the uh, best supported bike rides. Um, and I mean, if, if anything were to happen, if you needed water, if you break down, they're there to help you out. So is it is it a lot of fun? Because I notice when you guys are talking about it that you're all smiling, and it seems to be well. Now you're smiling too. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's a it's a lot of fun, and you meet a lot of nice yeah. people. We have some great video that was sent to us by the Smart Ride people, showing you the Smart Ride and of the great way that people get together and get involved. So here we go. This is a little bit. That's their logo coming up, and is this this is actually on the, the trail? Smart Do either of you guys remember being on this? Miles. Yes. Okay. I, I remember the start. <laughs> it's amazing. Absolutely. That's probably the most. And uh, what's this? This is that this looks is like during. <laughs> this is during. Yes. Mm -hmm. So talk talk me through this. Uh, well, um, I'm not sure where it is, but I know right. it's one of the how many bridges do we go over? Forty three bridges. Forty three bridges between Miami and Key West. Wow. Some are big, um, some are little, and just tons tons of support. 
I mean, it, it includes everybody driving the route, um, you know, all, all of the residents, all of the visitors going back and forth between Key West and Miami. I mean, they're constantly beeping at us. They're cheering us on. It, it's absolutely fantastic. And they try to make it as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, they're, they're watching you all the time. Well, speaking about safety, what happens if somebody comes tumbling off a bike or if something happens? What? It, are there for, people there to help? There are. Ah, who's and there? Either riders mm -hmm. in the beginning, and then the, somebody in a car or a motorcycle will be right there. So do they have some medical professionals that are along for yes. the ride? Yes. That's wonderful. So how does that work? Are they at the pit stops? They are, they are at the pit stops, and they are on the road, too, just to be sure that everybody's safe. I would imagine not too many people come off because it's a pretty controlled environment. It is. Are you dodging some traffic as well? Lots. A lot of traffic, yeah, a lot of traffic. But uh, again, with the support team um, that we have up and up and down the ride, it's they're always there to control that traffic and and basically to help you out. And most people are very, very uh, respectful because they know it's a it's a ride. And there there are a few that aren't, but for the most part, I think. I'm looking forward to all the camaraderie before, during, and after. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It is fun. So this will be your first time doing first the time, Smart yes. Ride this year. Yep. And you've done it how many times? This will be my seventh. Seventh time, and every year, have you ridden or did you crew the first year? I wrote, I've ridden every one. And were you a cyclist before this? Yes. You were, Al? This is actually my third time doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually before this, uh, I, I tried running a little bit, but Biking seems to help my body a lot more, so I kind of stick with it, and, and it feels good. It feels good. So. Well, well, a lot of people don't realize that cycling just in and of itself is a non-impact sport. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful thing because there are many people that have back problems and even knee problems. If you get outfitted with the right bike, they can put you in a position where it's not going to hurt your knees. Absolutely. You know, so that, that's wonderful. And if somebody doesn't have a bike, what do they do though? Because these bikes have to be able to do this long 165 mile ride. And I would imagine that your spirit pulls you through on the human level. But if somebody doesn't own a bike, what do they do? You can borrow one, <laughs> rent one. Does the Smart uh, Ride have provisions to rent bikes? Or I'm do you go through a local I'm bike? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. That I'm not sure about either. Um, I actually bought my bike outright, and I, I got fitted for it. I would think I would say that's one of the most important things, is to get fitted appropriately for your bike, like you said, so that it feels right. Because you're riding for many, many hours during the day. What Absolutely. What is a typical day? What What's the day like? You start at when, and when do you end? Mm -hmm. Well, again, it, you need to remind everybody that this is more of a ride. This is not a race. Mm -hmm. This is something to be enjoyed, mm -hmm. um, to enjoy the scenery, to enjoy the people that you're riding with as everybody's enjoying your company just as much. Uh, the first day is 100 miles uh, out of Miami, and it, I would say, probably lasts between seven and eight hours, depending on how fast you're riding. All right, well, yeah. why don't we go ahead and take a little break. And for information on the Smart Ride, you can go ahead and go to thesmartride.org or you can visit their Facebook page. And when we return, Can Community Health's effervescent, energetic board chair, Bob Trisolini, <laughs> will talk about Can's role as title sponsor and we'll show you some great Smart Ride video with a message from our team captain, Aaron O'Connor. Florida is number one for beaches. The Sunshine State also leads the nation for new HIV cases. The opioid epidemic makes the fight against HIV and hepatitis C more challenging. Minorities, women, young people, and seniors are most affected by HIV. But you can get tested. You can get diagnosed. And you can get treated. CAN offers hope. For information, call or visit us online. Hi, I'm Dickie Smothers. You may know me as one of the Smothers Brothers, and then again, maybe not. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk to you about something serious. Hepatitis C, no laughing matter. It can lead to cirrhosis of the liver, even liver cancer. Baby boomers are most at risk. You could have hep C and not even know it. You can get tested, you can get diagnosed, and you can get treated. Hep C can now be cured. For information, call or visit cancommunityhealth.org.
Bike riders, this one's for you. Welcome back to Cannes Community Health. I'm Alex Redmond and we're talking about the Smart Ride, why we do it and how you can get involved. And of course we are joined by Bob Trisolini, we're joined by David Roy and Al Concha. And they are all involved in the Smart Ride this year, but you have particular reasons for why you're involved as Cannes Board Chair. Tell yeah, us about I'd, it. I'd like to gain awareness. The highest risk people are 13 to 24 year olds, women, minority, and seniors. So I want to get that word out there. And it's testing and prevention. So that's what I'm hoping to get across. What do you think is the missing link? Do you think that in in a climate where we're very guarded about what we say, you know, because we all want to say things that are the right thing to say, mm -hmm. do you think that we need to talk about HIV more? Yes. We need to talk about it more. We need to talk about it in schools. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about it in different organizations. It shouldn't be that kind of behind the dark curtain, you know? And we need to talk about the stigma. I mean, a lot of people will not come forward because they still feel like they're lepers, mm -hmm. you know? And now with the prevention, with once people are tested and they are diagnosed and they get on the medication, in a very short period of time, they uh, become healthy again and, and their virus is uh, suppressed. Suppressed, or suppressed. that's correct. the word I was yes. looking for. Yeah. Right, so. Inactive, in, in right. I, I think that it's really important to, to realize that this is, HIV is a virus that affects absolutely everybody because after all, you put the human back into the H of HIV. It's children, it's women, it's men, mm -hmm. it's straight, it's gay, you know, cisgender, gay, it's, it's, it's everybody. So the thing is that unless you live under a rock and you're never going to be intimate with somebody, it's, it's very important that we raise awareness and just to stay healthy and and to keep people healthy, so it's really good. People and, forget and it's a virus. Yeah. It's a virus. It's a virus like anything else, and exactly. we need to get rid of words like infected. We don't say that with other viruses. We say transmission. It's just a new like case. shingles, you know, it lays dormant. Right. You've had chicken pox, it's in your, somewhere along the line, it comes out again. Yeah. So you have, in fact, vaccinations yeah. for shingles. Well, hopefully the day will come we'll have that for HIV. Yeah, and God bless people like Gilead who are putting those commercials out there right now. It's really important because they are also making HIV a normal part of the everyday conversation, particularly they show all different people in there, which is great. But you guys were at a fundraiser, you two, this yes. recently, and there were a bunch of people there, and that was a great fundraiser, and I believe that we have video of the team captain, Erin O'Connor, that was taken at that, and she has a little message for you, so we're gonna go ahead and roll on that video. Um, we're raising funds to actually ride. We have to raise up to $25,000 for all riders to qualify to actually ride the ride this year. It's actually $1,250 per rider we have to raise. We have 18 riders this year. Uh, so with the Smart Ride, we actually cap off around 500. This is my fourth year riding. So it's a two-day bike ride. Um, it actually starts from sunup to sundown on um, the first day, and the second day is from sunup to about lunchtime. So it takes about a day and a half to complete. We do not have law enforcement. Um, actually, the Smart Ride provides what's called a motorcycle team. We have motorcycles um, that actually ride up and down the street to make sure that we are safe. Uh, we also have um, support vehicles. If you do break down, someone can get you, um, help you change your tire. Uh, we have medical crew. Um, we are fully supported on the ride. We have 43 bridges that we have to go over. So some are small, some are big. Um, so we just take them as they come. Uh, I work for Can Community Health, so I'm obviously very passionate about raising money for HIV. Um, I had another team member um, that was currently riding that um, talked me into riding, and I haven't regretted that since. I've done it ever since. Um, it's just a really amazing cause to actually ride for. So Erin actually works for Cannes Community Health and she is just such a wonderful spokesperson and she's so involved in the Smart Ride, always putting together fundraisers and great things like that. So let's talk a little bit about the training aspect because I know that recently we had people training out there at Benderson. They were out there on their bicycles and you know doing multiple loops and riding all over the place. And where are you two training and how are you training so that other people out there that may be interested in doing the smart right can get involved. Well, I generally enjoy training, obviously, right along the water. I love the water. I love the beach. Um, it's just always a great view. 
Um, I tend to ride my bike throughout the year, but I tend to train specifically for this ride beginning about in June, mm -hmm. and, and I tend to build up by the week, so. So, yeah. so give me a typical, um, do you do the same thing? You build up by the week? Build up by the week. Mm -hmm. uh, you start, if you've never done this before, you start at 10 miles. If five that miles, That sounds like a lot matter. though. <laughs> what happens if somebody's not that fitness level? Because to, to somebody that hasn't done it before, I teach spinning classes. You start you know, slow. As, mm -hmm. And I tell people, do what you can, and then add to that. And that's exactly right. Okay. <laughs> Five Scared miles. Me well, I mean, no, well, I say ten miles. I've been, I've been doing this for a while, yeah. so. But start at five miles, yeah. and just each week, build up, and you know, but before you know it, you're at twenty-five, then you're at thirty, yeah. and when you can do thirty, you can do forty, and yeah. and so on. Yeah. It's. I, I guess when you really put, put it into perspective, it sounds like a lot, one hundred and sixty-five miles. But there has to be somebody in your life that, that you know that's living with HIV. And, and the sad reality is that many people, I, I think we all know people living with HIV, but again, addressing the stigma, because of the stigma, many people keep it hidden. You know, they don't want to tell their dentist because of the difficulty in getting a dentist that will treat them. They don't want to tell their friends and family, and yes, even their church, for fear of rejection. So I think that even though you may not think you know someone living with HIV, you do. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. 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 And so knowing that and knowing that it could be somebody that you love that is scared to maybe even share that with you, going on a 165-mile bike ride may, is kind of small potatoes. For, I mean, it is a big deal. It's a lot of training. But in comparison to the great awareness that you're raising. So let, let's talk about what you hope to take away from this. I hope that people realize that you can get tested, you can get treatment, and you can live a long, healthy life. Well, you know what? That, you sound just like that great commercial I might have seen you on, Bob Trisolini. <laughs> yeah, of course, Bob Trisolini is not only the board chair of CAM, but he also very kindly donated his time. He is a working actor, and he donated his time to do a commercial to raise awareness for seniors. And mm -hmm. it's, that, that particular commercial has pretty much gone viral. It's like unbelievable. It's a great video and a great and thanks awareness thanks to you tool. for writing it and producing oh, it and directing any, it. <laughs> anytime. But um, what, what do you hope will happen after this next Smart Ride? What, what do you hope will happen at the end? This year they're projecting about 500 people. That's quite a lot. 500 people, 500 riders? Participants, yes. So what was the question? So the question is, what do you hope to take away from it this year? What's your hope for the next year? Well, I hope that we don't have to do it again next year. Yeah, because but there is a cure. There is a cure. Yes. So that, that is my end goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That will be, what about you? I would definitely second that goal, but I mean, a lot more awareness, a lot more talk, open talk, um, re re reducing that stigma. And, and just getting rid of it and having open conversations. You know, it needs to be spoken about. When you are at an event like the Smart Ride and there's so many like-minded people, because obviously somebody is going to be like-minded, how do we reach out to other people within our community and beyond to get them involved and to start caring? Do you guys have any tips for how we can do that better? To reach out to other people? Because this is already friends and family of people living with HIV and people living with HIV. You told me something very compelling before about at the end ceremony. What were people pulling out of their, their fanny packs? They're pulling out pictures of their loved ones who have passed. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know what? Keep right, going. yes, I, I've lost a lot of people as a former hairstylist of Los Angeles and for many years ago, but... You know, one of the yes. other things I was thinking about, Alex, like the commercial we did for seniors, mm -hmm. maybe there are more commercials like for children. There are children that are born with HIV, mm -hmm. their mothers were HIV, they're born with it. And talk about, you know, all the different uh, age groups and all the minorities and whatever, mm -hmm. so that it's not just geared to one, the one we did on seniors Correct. was great, but I think we could take that and make different segments and reach the public, get them thinking. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something. We already have another commercial that's running a public service announcement with different people in it from different cultural mm -hmm. and ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. and ages. So mm -hmm. we have that. We have six different faces mm -hmm. because it's really important that when you're trying to reach out to someone that 
people that are unfamiliar with HIV can see the face of someone that they may relate to. Mm -hmm. So that, that's very important because there is comfort in familiarity, mm -hmm. in but knowing someone that looks like me, that may be similar to me from a similar background right. and just all different things, you know, language, mm -hmm. style all of those things. So I think that's really important as well. But I'm just trying to think of ways that we can let more people know about it. Here's your opportunity to tell people about what they're going to get out of it. Go for it. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I mean, just more conversation and, and um, reducing that stigma. I mean, but what about know. signing up for the smart ride? Get, get, lead people through the steps because people are like, you know, it's going to be an involved process, 165 right. miles. Mm -hmm. G give us like a little picture window of how do you do it? Well, I mean, first you would start off by going to the smartride.org. Mm -hmm. um, you could join as a team or you could join as an individual. Um, it's very, very easy to sign up. I believe um, well, you, you just basically put in your information and, and you could either be fitted to a team or for yourself. Uh, get yourself a bike. So, so wait, if you don't, mm -hmm. if you're not on a team or mm -hmm. you don't join with a group of other people, mm -hmm. can you tell them a little bit about yourself and they'll try to match make you on the best team available? Absolutely. Oh, that's Absolutely. Interesting. You that's could good. always find a, a local team that may want some more participants and then you, you know, you just jump on with them and you could train with them and that's how it, you know, how it would begin. So. So sure. that's good. And then, so what happens from there? You say you get outfitted with the bike. How involved is that? Do you go to a bike shop? Or? Go to a bike shop. They measure you. Hmm. And you must be fitted to your bike so you don't have injury. Hmm. That's. And what kind of bikes are they? Road bikes or, or even a, a hybrid bike. Hmm. Oh, a hybrid. So you're not actually pedaling? It's got a little bit of power there that no, no, no. kicks up? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's the kind of bike I want. I want the little one where you go like, vroom, vroom, right. and the motor picks no, up and no, back no. you go. <laughs> not quite like that. It's, it's all in uh, hybrid bikes. You can go off-road or on-road. Oh. Right. Like a my, mountain, mountain bike? Like, like a, a mountain, well, mountain bike? Well, not quite a mountain bike, but... <laughs> I thought, it, I thought it was too good to be true. <laughs> what about if somebody is not comfortable going on a bike that has only two wheels? Are there other kinds of bikes that... I have seen three-wheelers. Have, have you? Yes, I've absolutely. Seen, I've seen the bikes with the real fat tires. That's the one I need. We're going to go ahead and take a break. But we'll be right back with more on the Smart Ride 2018, so stay with us. Seniors, this one's for you. I'm Bob Trisolini. We don't talk about it, but seniors are at a high risk for HIV, hepatitis C, and other sexually transmitted diseases. You know that little blue pill that kind of puts us in the mood? Well, sometimes we don't practice safe sex. Many are walking around with HIV and hep C and don't even know it. So protect yourself. You can get tested. You can get diagnosed. And you can be treated. Can Community Health. Florida is number one for beaches. The Sunshine State also leads the nation for new HIV cases. The opioid epidemic makes the fight against HIV and hepatitis C more challenging. Minorities, women, young people, and seniors are most affected by HIV. But you can get tested. You can get diagnosed. And you can get treated. CAN offers hope. For information, call or visit us online. Let's be real. We go to the gym till our muscles fail in the name of health and fitness and beauty. But one very special two-day bike ride is shared by hundreds making a difference in the lives of people living with HIV. This is Can Community Health and we're talking about the Smart Ride 2018. We are joined by Al Chona, who I called Al Concha before, so I apologize for that. <laughs> David Roy and of course board chair Bob Trisolini of Can Community Health. So, gentlemen, let, let me start with you, Bob, because this is one of several events, and I want to mm -hmm. make sure that you get the message out there. We have Smart Ride, where CAN is the title sponsor this year, for right. which we are very proud. We have AIDS Walk as well. We have AIDS Walk 2018, mm -hmm. and that's going to be even bigger and better. And that falls on World AIDS Day in 2018, mm -hmm. which is December 1st. Mm -hmm. We just finished Can Dance. And we finished Can Dance. And you Very were successful. a winner a couple of years yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was top fundraiser two, two years ago, 2016. Yep. And then 
you were telling me that there are more exciting things to come mm -hmm. at Can Community Health and for Can Community Health. What's up? What's well, on Well, on March the 16th at the Ritz-Carlton, we're going to have a red ribbon gala call the many faces of HIV. We talked about the many faces of HIV. And our guests were going to be Billy Porter from Kinky Boots and MJ Rodriguez from the show Pose, which is in, on FX t TV right now. So uh, we have celebrities. We're going to have a huge black tie event and hopefully get the word out again. And for people that haven't seen Pose, it is Unbe have you both seen Pose? I have not. I have oh, not. Shame on you. <laughs> it is unbelievable. It's it's almost like a fly on the wall look mm -hmm. at what what they're calling in their ballroom, but which uh, for some of us may remember that uh, there was voguing when Madonna came out with Vogue. It was mm -hmm. actually way before that within the gay community. They had amazing voguing going on on the piers in New York, where people instead of young men going there that were ousted from their families because of being gay mm -hmm. or having an alternative lifestyle. They were found by a community and they were taught how to dance and pose and that was called voguing and that's mm -hmm. basically what happened. So instead of going out there with knives and guns and having fights, they formed different houses like the House of Chanel, the House of Dior, the House of Givenchy. Mm -hmm. They were named after all of these amazing designers and my good friend Willie Ninja was the star of the movie Paris is Burning and Willie is no longer with us so many times when I do these events I do this partly in his honor and for all my other friends that I've lost but um, is there someone special that you have one special person that you can think of that you'd like to honor today two Valerie and Debbie this is how I got this started and I won't stop until I until it's over. And again, that's Valerie Wojohowicz and Debbie Sergi Laws, and they are both the most amazing women. They both work as peer navigators at Can Community Health. And of course, that's when somebody gets diagnosed and they're frightened or they're just having problems. They can go to one of these two girls who are so unbelievable. They are just, uh, you know, they're both very dear friends of mine as well. And I can't think of two more honorable people to be uh, doing this in, in the name of. I mean, you know, to honor them. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, uh, Valerie usually rides. She, uh, so. She's not riding this year. She's a fierce little redhead, I'm telling you, that girl. <laughs> no, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so that's last final thoughts, because we're almost out of time. Al. Um, again, open the conversation, remove the stigma, uh, get out there, get active. If it's something you believe in, please, by all means, sign up for the ride. And I mean, it, it's a great time. You meet some of the best people ever. You and really of course, know. if you want more information on the Smart Ride, you can go to thesmartride.org and you can always visit Can Community Health. Dot org. We want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us on Can Community Health, and we'll see you next time. 